beep, 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 beep. Hey everybody, Mikey Cat Outdoors here. So what are we doing today? Well, I'm back from the dead. Been uh, under the weather for about a month and a half, but still alive and kicking. So I'm gonna do a uh, <laughs> nice video comparison today of Polk Systems. So for those of you who don't know what polks are, they're basically glorified heavy gauge sleds that you can pull your gear with when you're in a wintertime situation out in the woods. You can collect your firewood, you can haul your gear out to camp, all sorts of stuff. So let's check it out. All right, so I got four polk sleds here. So starting off on the left, that gray one, is actually from skipolk.com. That's a rotomold uh, sled and it's got some nice features to it. I'll show you in a bit. That little yellow one, that's just a kitty sled just to show as a comparison of stuff you'd buy at a regular hardware store. And I got a couple of uh, poles there in the middle. The white ones I bought and the black ones I made. Uh, they're basically just fiberglass poles and they got some eye hooks on them and then they got uh, some of the rotating joints at the other side. I'll show you those. And the orange sled here, that is a Paris Expedition sled. Actually got that one from REI, but you can get them all elsewhere online. Uh, got it on sale for like 35 bucks, so that was pretty cheap. And finally here on the end, this black one with the blue rails, uh, that is a jet sled. And that one I think is about 50 inches in length. 48 somewhere in that range so I could take tape measure if you're really interested but uh, that one was probably like 50 bucks when I got it and it's fairly heavy duty uh, they come in I don't know, three four five different sizes whatever you need I think you can get them from probably like three feet all the way up to like the size of a truck bed <laughs> um, these two are probably the most economical that really is not for heavy duty stuff and that one's pretty good but it can cost you a pretty penny unless you find them on sale alrighty so ski polk one here on the end uh, this has a nice little thing on top and it's got a zippered bag that you can get into all the contents in there uh, that's just a regular heavy gauge rotomold plastic they come with these little uh, whatever you want to call that, little bolts that you can pop out and you can put your uh, ski poles on there for whenever you're pulling that behind you. Uh, this will come off. This is bungeed on and everything. Uh, it's got some little grips down there and this one on the end has the optional flip out. Uh, see if I can do this. Yeah. This one's got little uh, tracking fins that you can swivel on and off. Here's just a little divot down here that it's kind of locking on. So that way if you got really deep snow or something, you're on the side of a hill, you can flip those down to your trekking pole and stay on track without sliding around as much. So that one's pretty nice. Like I say, you can unsnap these, you can get inside the bag. Uh, it's got a lot of storage. But that by itself, uh, I was going to say, I think the sled's normally like in a 300 range. I got it as a blemish discount for basically half off. So that one, it just had some cosmetic stuff. And they were worried some of them had some issues down near the fins that you couldn't mount those. But this one, I was lucky enough to get that. So it was like half the price of what it would normally be. And then I bought that bag on top separately. Uh, it doesn't come with it by itself, so the bag's extra. Bought that, and I think they were having some bag stuff too on sale at the time. And then, of course, a little kitty sled from the hardware store. And that stuff is really not that thick. Um, I mean, it's heavy enough to put a kid in, but you know, you could probably haul a little firewood back and forth if you had to in camp, if you're car camping or something. But I wouldn't take that out for real, real long distance, especially not over gravel roads. Uh, it just doesn't have enough oomph to it. I don't think to last more than maybe a season or two, and then pff, it's kaputs. Um, and then, like I say, these poles, 
you've got eye bolts up here on one end and these are ones I made. I just had little threaded uh, couplers here and I threaded some fiberglass rods that I got from a tractor store and mine were only <laughs> three feet long so I had a little coupler here in the middle, epoxy that all together, took some of the splicing compound and put it over this. This is what the black stuff is. You can get that in the electrical section of hardware stores. And that one's got its uh, little Velcro thing, which is a good thing to do. So that way, whenever you uh, use the poles on trail, you just kind of cross them like an X. And then that just kind of keeps them together as a management tool. But down on this end, you've got these little rotating uh, eye bolts here. And you can get those at hardware stores too, like Ace Hardware and whatnot. And I found some of those uh, for this other pole here that I made. So I have those. And what those do is when you've got your little bolt here, uh, you basically just pop this off. And you can put that through your little eye hole of your pole. Put that pole in there and then latch those back on. And then your poles will be on there. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, this sorry came grummeted. Uh, so I just put on a little bit of rope I had extra and a piece of pipe. And made myself a little tow behind handle if I need it. Uh, that way I don't always have to have the harness with me. And then I've just uh, drilled a couple of holes in here. And fished through some uh, straps. Little nylon straps here. So you can kind of see. They just go a certain amount. And... So you got one gender on one end, the other gender on the other end, and then you just kind of fish them together and got the excess length there. So if you've got your bags of stuff, you got loose items, whatever, you can kind of strap it down in here. A um, couple people have gotten real cheap, like 48 inch uh, back duffel bags and stuff from Amazon that you can put in there. Um, I know Alaska Airframe or Alaska Tarpon Tent, whatever company, I'll put the link up. They've got a nice long, like four foot, five foot, and six foot option for uh, pulk bags, but they're not real deep. They're only like eight inches deep on some of those. Um, so if you had real big stuff like stoves or whatever, you might want to pack those separate or have a deeper bag uh, like they have on Amazon. But uh materials you know you got to think about snow and ice and water and stuff getting in things so you may want something that's a little more like an x-pack fabric or dry bag or something to put inside of your duffel bag to keep some items dry and other things really won't matter um but that sled i bought it 35 bucks i basically got the channel kits up there um and i say it's just these parts you know a pair of them you bolt that on and basically for 20 bucks or whatever that channel kit was, wasn't that much, uh, you can make that available for using those types of poles. So that way you can drag that behind you instead of always having to just use one arm behind your back. So for ergonomic reasons, you kind of want the poles. And uh, I say the buckles there, they're nice. There is a thing though, if you get too cold of weather, you gotta watch what kind of plastic you're using on buckles because plastic will get brittle. So on this one, the jet sled, I think I bought this one at a sporting goods store, I don't know, 2019, I guess, 2018. I bought this for like 50 bucks, added the channel kit on, and I got those channel kits for both these sleds from skipolk.com, same place where I got that sled on the end and the white poles there. Um, but these ones, I got some Sea to Summit uh, buckles, and they're metallic buckles, so they don't snap or anything. They just kind of loop and hook on there, which is kind of nice. Um, you can find these at Cabela's. I was looking at REI. They didn't have them, so I was like, where did I get them? You can find them online on Amazon, but uh, Cabela's has them, and you can get them at different lengths, but... Like I say, you have just your excess length there if you need it. And I just kind of made some holes in a sled and just ran those through. And, you know, that's all I did. I also added this optional, uh, what do you call it, like rails on here. So they had a rail kit uh, from Chappelle here that makes a jet sled. 
And what that allows you to do is if you're on like real gravelly roads and stuff and you want this to be a little more durable for wear and tear, you can add that on. Uh, so that gives you a little bit of height and it also helps you with tracking a little bit too. So you ain't like swerving all the time when you're pulling that. Um, and then that bolts in. That's what all those little bolts are there. Just tiny little uh, washers, little rubber and steel washer and little lock nuts on there. If you really want that to be waterproof, you could just dab a little silicone on there and you won't have to worry about water permeating that if you're going through those stream crossings or stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the hardware in a nutshell and I'm gonna show you a few other things. All right, so I know you're gonna ask about the sizing of everything. So let's take a few quick measurements here, just kind of give you a rough idea how big some of these guys are. But any other specs, go online, check them out. Uh, but yeah, these are uh, these are usable size sleds, and I mean, like so you get a bag in there or a cover on them, you're gonna maximize your volume. So don't worry too much. But a nice, you know, shallow five inch, 10 inch sled, that's good enough. You don't want them too high because you'll tip them over when you're sliding around in the snow, but you, know, you keep your center of gravity closer to the ground, you're good on these. So, I mean, a lot of people have used these, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of folks on expeditions, all these various ones. Mega Woods Walker used to use the Paris Polk sled, the orange one, and Suge and a few others have used the uh, Chappelle jet sleds. So, I mean, I've used it before with hell carrying an 85 pound uh, Arctic oven tent in. So, it, it works. It, there's no problems with it. So, yeah, granted, if you want to make your own little components like this, I mean, these buckles you can get at a hardware store. You can just get some aluminum, bend it the right way, a couple holes in there, and then a little aluminum channel for the back, some lock nuts, washer, and whatnot. You could do it, uh, but if you want to save time, 20 bucks for a set of these, it's, you know, it's worth it. The poles here, uh, you know, you can buy these. These ones are really nice because they're put together really well. I don't have to worry about stuff coming undone. Uh, but these are a lot more expensive than DIY. Uh, a lot of these fiberglass rods you can get in three foot lengths at tractor stores and stuff for like little fence post things. Finding six footers are a little harder to do. Then you gotta get threading kits and couplers and epoxy and everything. But it is possible, so I made my own. But like I said, these little rotating couplers here, these are nice because, you know, they're a little jammed up right now because of the snow and ice, but uh, they rotate really well and allow you the flexibility of using that sled uh, when you're doing turns and everything. And, it's just like having a ball bearing in there, but keep those things clean, uh, keep them dry. I got mine in the snow here today, so whoops. Probably just WD-40 them a little bit and you'll be fine. So you can see that's roughly 53 and a half inches. About 21 inches of usable space in there. That one's got about 55, 56 inches of usable space in there. About 15 and a half inches of usable space in there. It's about 10 inches deep. It's maybe about 5 inches deep. Alright, that one's probably about 5 inches of actual sled space. But by the time you take your bag and you kind of extend it out, you can easily get out to close to a foot. You know, this bag will come out quite a bit. Because you can take that top cover part off of it and you know extend those straps down here and let this bag really puff out and you could get a foot deep of storage in here so you put your wood stoves and all that in there and that's similar to like having a cover on a jet sled you can really get a lot more volume in there once you have a good cover or bag for it all right so got a few accessories here uh with the Chappelle jet sled i've got a travel cover that's just a camel one. You can get them in black, white, whatever. So that just happens to fit the size of this one. And that's nice. So, you know, if you've got all your stuff bagged up or loose in here, you want to keep the snow and all the water and stuff off of it, you just elastic 
that guy on top and it keeps a lot of that stuff out uh, that's great for when you're traveling down the trail especially on snowy days I've got a uh, little backpack harness here and it doesn't look like much in this state but I've got the simpler version of it this is the just regular hip belt uh, tow line so you basically got uh, little buckles there and you've got some other buckles here so um, what you can do is basically uh, take your poles your big eye hooks and you can hook them into these carabiners and uh, you've got other things you can hook in back here as well uh, spare parts and stuff too if you need them so there was a pair of those Cedar Summits uh, got a spare pair there they're two meters long but you can see I got that from skipulk.com. <clears throat> I tried looking online, Amazon, other places for stuff. You can try to get like moly ones online and yeah, they're okay. But by the time you spend to get everything that you need, you might as well just buy one from them. Uh, buy once, cry once. And the one that's got the backpack straps on it is a little nicer in terms of being able to distribute your load weight uh, onto your shoulders and off of your hips as much. So when you're pulling, it makes it a little easier. Mush! 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 On Ozzy, on Herschel, on Slow Mo. It's as simple as that. So as you can see, it's pretty easy and comfortable to pull these around uh, with a harness system. It distributes all that weight. You can have that loaded up with 50, 60 pounds of firewood if you really wanted, or gear, and saves you on the trails uh, from back-breaking labor, and you don't have to worry about keeling over whenever you got a backpack on. You just distribute everything in your sled, and it's good to go. So if you like what you've seen, Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you again in the outdoors. As always, thanks for watching.